<clears throat> One million niggas inside. You can't break me, even though you try. One million niggas inside. Still found truth, even though you lie. One million niggas inside. Yeah. <laughs> even though you hit me with everything you got. One million niggas inside. Yeah. Hold on, let me, let me spit some truth real quick, like. Let me start flipping this goddamn camera around. Ugh. I ain't got no pants on from the waist down. <sighs> Becky with the good hair. How y'all doing, first of all? Hey, Becky with the good hair. I ain't in my truck no more. I mean, since you like to look at everything, I'm in my big old bed I was telling you about. You wanna see? You wanna see it? Hold on. You see, I'm in my big ass bed covered up. Got my little salad, got my little tray, you know, eat with. Since you wanna see every goddamn thing, 12 foot by 12 foot, you know, my big long ass can sit up here and wiggle my toes. Let me, you wanna see my toes too, punk? I could just sit up here and wiggle my toe, the long ass bed, you know, big ass room, big as a gym, you know, you little punk. <laughs> yeah, you want to make it seem like the sad life. He's so mad. He's so miserable. Bitch, I'm chilling. But I ain't get on here to discuss Becky with the good hair, the little bitch. Uh, it done been two minutes now. I think I can cuss now. <laughs> I'm learning the game. Shout out to my homie that told me wait two minutes to say, Becky with the good hair, you a bitch. There's two minutes and 53 seconds. Hold on, my phone ain't charging. Let me see. Is my phone charging? So, the title is, let me put this salad down. Uh, I put the uh, title up, thank you to uh, Jalen Rose, because somebody sent me an interview of Stephen A. Smith and Jalen Rose in, uh, who else was on there? Skip Bayless. Hey, Skip Bayless, you little pale face bitch. You thought you were gonna be safe, huh? <laughs> I think somebody sent me that so your dawn of the dead looking ass can get roasted. You pale face bitch, you can't snuff. What? How in the fuck do they put bitch ass niggas like you in place? Why are you talking sports? You the most unathletic, Dracula face, white hair. You look like you should be a lobotomist or something. It don't look like you should be talking no sports. You a bitch ass nigga. You sit here and say it, and that's the key. Y'all go look at the interview with Jalen Rose. What I told y'all, pay attention. I don't got a lot. These bitch ass niggas expose they self. You got Jalen Rose, who's a legend, who's a bad motherfucker on the court. You got Stephen A. Bitch, and you got a dead face, pale white horse. And both of them some bitches talking more than the guy who actually do this shit. You can't make this shit up. Shout out to my two homies, y'all know who y'all are. But you can't make this shit up. I mean, this bitch ass, punk ass, pale face, short ass bitch, Skip Bayless, sat there and said, Jalen Rose said, dog, he can't be a bust. He cannot be a bust. After 10 years of doing this, he can't be a bust. And Stephen A went on his rant. Oh, he can't shoot, he can't dribble, he can't move. Even though there's video, big loud mouth bitch, there's video to the contrary. <laughs> 
There's many a videos to the contrary, you stupid bitch. But I'm not going to get off subject. I want to get to the part where Skip Bayless answered the question. Jalen Rose said, how can y'all say this man is a, a bust when he's getting paid millions of dollars to play basketball? And that little Don of the Dead bitch, Skip Bayless said, unfortunately, they are. I told y'all this is about money. You name one motherfucker they've had this type of an attack on. That they take them on national TV 10 years. Name me the number one draft pick 10 years later that they motherfucker said, unfortunately, he's getting paid. Because Jalen Rose was trying to destroy their narrative. And if they didn't talk over him, he could have got to analytics. You stupid some. You stupid son of a gun. Fuck that. You stupid son of a bitch. How you think my agent was getting me drafted and signed every, well, not drafted, but signed all the time, you dumb bitch? Because when they looked at the analytics, I am not in control of how many minutes a dumb son of a bitch put me in the game. I'm not in control of that. And a lot of the times I was in the game during garbage minutes. Anybody who know about basketball, when they put your bitch ass in down 30 and you got five minutes to go, Oh, nigga, it's a free-for-all. And I respect it. Any nigga that come off the bench, any nigga that go, anytime we touch the ball, we were shooting it, nigga, because that was our shine. Nigga, we got five minutes to shoot this shit so our mama can see us, nigga. Everybody was out there was trying to sprinkle a little bit of their mama's cooking on the court. So I understood. We got five minutes. You set the number one draft pick out there for five minutes, down 30, with a bunch of hungry niggas that's trying to sprinkle their mama cooking on the court so they can get paid. And then you got the nerve to say I'm a bust. But I want to know, you little punk bitch, Skip Bayless, why you so mad I was getting paid millions of dollars, boy? You sat here. You motherfuckers is the peanut gallery for real. How many times you golf with MJ, bitch? See, Mike Wilbon, bitch, light-skinned, mulatto-looking ass, bald-head, pencil-head motherfucker, milk dud looking bitch, he was smart enough not to say nothing. See, I realized they put a bunch of losers. A lot of you bitches in the media is fucking losers. Just like some of these motherfuckers that turn into cops in the military, a lot of you bitches was I wish I shoulda, coulda, ass nigga. You motherfuckers are some woulda, coulda, shoulda, ass niggas. Look at Stephen A. He made sports. He woulda made it. He think in his head he should have made it. He could have made it. But nah, he got his motherfucking coach fired. Hmm. You gonna get this mama's cooking. Why was they sending this son of a bitch to college campuses? Y'all watched a modern day. It was all about money. I'm not gonna use that word, but I know what it is. It was all about money. Those colleges were losing money. This is bigger than Kwame Brown. Y'all black sons, mama's cooking was just spraying. There was five guys in the NBA draft out of high school my year. There were gonna be another 15 or 20 the next year. And then it was gonna keep going worse and worse and worse. And you know what they said? Oh, hell to the knob. The college is going to lose money. So they demonize everybody in my draft class. They demonize me especially. And now they got you motherfuckers so fooled like they care about the de uh, development of these players and they taking them down to the G League just making more money out their bitch ass, slowing down their contracts to better contracts. Once they hit that G League, that ain't the same as a motherfucking NBA. They found the way to stop mama's cooking. I'm telling you, your sons that gonna come out of high school, they are gonna send their ass to the G League three, four, five years, and you might not never see them on the NBA floor. All of this was about money. I remember the day I went to, I flew to LA. Next day, no TMZ run up on me. 
And they asked me a bunch of questions. I said, I don't give a fuck about all that you talking about. I said, listen here, why would you not let kids come out of high school? That's free enterprise. You can give them a gun to go fight a war over some shit you don't tell them what they're killing people over, but then they can't go make money to put their mom on a golf course so they can get their mama's cooking at a golf course? Mm. Mm. Listen to the way they talk about me no matter what. So basically, what they're saying is, Stephen A. basically said, I'm so sorry that I couldn't shoot, I couldn't run, I couldn't jump. Well, then your homeboy picked me, so why the fuck you ain't talking about him one time? Did I pick myself? Oh, or was it because when the trade didn't go through, you couldn't make MJ look bad, so you ran on a smear campaign around the world, didn't you, little bitch? Mike Wilbon, Skip Bailey, all you motherfuckers in this together. You motherfuckers tried to stop mama's cooking and you bitches still couldn't beat me. <laughs> Shout out to Jalen Rose. You a real one, bro. And uh, you defending me like that, it probably, cause I don't remember seeing you on that show. Cause I didn't catch that episode, but I don't remember seeing you on that show with them too much longer. I think they moved you to another show because you too real for that bullshit they were trying to do. See, you for, you a Michigan nigga. You from Detroit. You, I love them Detroit niggas. They'll beat your goddamn man. Them niggas lead with respect and you better get them they respect. <laughs> I can tell you that right now, Jack. <laughs> Shout out to Detroit. Shit, I love being in Detroit. You can have a good time as long as you come with your respect and then you can leave with your ass. <laughs> Because if you don't, boy, they going to jump up and down on your ass like a trampoline. I promise you that. <laughs> them Detroit niggas, trick, trick, shout out to you and your whole crew and whoever them niggas is around you. Because, boy, if you is a disrespectful man, Detroit ain't the place for you. <laughs> they going to jump on your ass for real, for real. No questions asked. Matt Bond, Pretty Ricky, uh, Becky with the good hair. You might, you can't go to Detroit. A bitch ass nigga like you that invited a man to his penis? Nah, niggas like you can't go to Detroit. They would have, your own crew would have, they would have beat your motherfucking ass in Detroit. You'd have came around them niggas, you saw what I said to that fuck nigga. Somebody would have slapped your ass to sleep, boy. Just cause you ain't supposed to do that, punk. But anywho, shout out to Jalen Rose, man. I appreciate you, I respect you. You was trying to help them, help me sprinkle my mama's cooking. But I understand what they did to you. That's what's up. Y'all still think I'm lying. They doing this to all these black kids. Jeremy Lin, shout out to you, Jeremy Lin. Shout out to all the Asians. This is not about that. Jeremy Lin didn't have a better career than me. Jeremy Lin get to walk around here with Lin Sanity and with respect. Jeremy Lin got to go on their show, bitch ass Jack. You had your teeth out, falling asleep and shit. But you bitch ass uh, uh, Becky with the good hair, you were smiling hard and talking to that boy, letting him talk. You want to exclude me from a trade, bitch, but you let this uh, Asian man talk. I bet it fits your narrative, huh? I bet your white zaddy told you to bring Asians on, huh? And talk that shit like that, huh? And be very nice. Because if you would have disrespected him, bitch, you would have got canceled, wouldn't you? The easiest thing to disrespect is a black man and y'all allow it. We make too much money in this country for a motherfucker to say anything about us on a national TV stage. We buy too many motherfucking products for anybody to say anything about your mama's son on a national stage. And Jalen Rose didn't lose sight of that. But you little mulatto bitch, see you ain't got no connection with us anyway, so I'ma skip past your bitch ass. But, but, but fake ass Jack, since you jumped in them stands, bitch, you stopped being a man, boy. You fell in love with this fake ass persona you got of being a thug. You fell in love with that shit and you damn near like to got your ass whipped. And I'm praying to the high heavens you call my phone when you get here next month, bitch. Because I'm gonna stop all this motherfucking talking you niggas doing with all this girl ass talking over the internet, acting like y'all like that. You don't disrespect men like that, boy. 
and I would love to jump up and down on you like a trampoline. Just to uh, set an example, I want you to go back around your friends and say, God damn, he a hell of a nigga. He told me not to disrespect him because I will show you, boy. That's not how you talk to men, boy. I came to you in peace trying to talk to you, bitch. And look at what you did to your brother. And then in front of them crackers, ooh, well, white folks, in front of them is, ooh, Wakanda, this is that. Something happened to your people. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about my people, bitch? What about my people, bitch? Huh? Only your people get respect, huh? Yeah, you always want to rally the troops. You bitch ass nigga, you been in groups so long, you don't know how to be by yourself and stand alone and respect the man on, on his own. You a bitch ass nigga. And I'm gonna keep telling you two, you two stupid bitches, the No Smoke Podcast, the, condes the two condescending bitches that can't leave each other alone, you bitches been together since Golden State. God damn, what the fuck wrong with y'all niggas? Why don't you raise a family? Why the fuck y'all niggas always around each other, bitch? You work together, you shower together, you, you work out together. What's wrong with you bitch ass nigga? I told y'all it was a boys club. Stop hands, we friends. Bitch ass niggas. And that's why y'all think y'all tough. Cause y'all hang out together. And look at the example of another boys club. LeBron, I like you friend. I love your game. I respect the shit out your game. Respect the shit out the fact that you got to school. But why do you get to go party and Lou Williams got to go sit out and get it suspended? And then the media kick his drawers in his ass. But you, sir, you, sir, you seem to be above the rules. Hmm. Wonder why that is. <laughs> I wonder why that is. It ain't no go along, get along game. <laughs> it ain't no, I'm lying. I'm a disgruntled basketball player. I'm so broken up about my bus ass life. I can roll over three times in my bed, but I'm, 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 I'm hurt. I'm fucking. <laughs> but you know what, y'all? Let me just break it down and tell you. I just, I just been a bus for so long. <laughs> And uh, y'all finally got me, Chris Bouchard, Rob Parker. You know, I've just been relegated to jokes and disrespecting people. I don't have no basis for what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just such a fucking loser. Can somebody send me Matt Barnes? <laughs> Please send that nigga to me. <laughs> I jump on his ass like a trap. <laughs> I need to cut my shit out. Hey, but look, man. Y'all, please go look at that goddamn interview, man. Please go look at that interview because I think it's something to this shit, dog. Man, this shit, that shit was dangerous. I couldn't believe it. I start, I was, I, I was taken aback just hearing this man words. I thought I took some of Stephen A. Money, uh, uh, uh been with his wife or something. The way he was talking about me in year 10. He was so fresh with it like it was year one. Stephen A., you need some help, boy. I know alpha males like me make you mad because you ain't had no daddy, bitch. I'm probably the daddy that left your mama because she couldn't deal with your mama talking. And if she raised a bitch-ass son like you that do all that bitch-ass talking, nigga, that's why he left. He didn't want to hear all that goddamn bumping the gun. He saw you and looked at your little scringy ass. He probably came out looking like a little bald head weasel already. And he looked at that shit and was like, mm-mm, and hauled the fuck ass. So now you got a bunch of emotions and you taking that shit out in the world. You was a punk bitch. You made millions from talking about an NBA. Hey, check this out. Let me show you how great I am, Stephen A. You have been kicking that jazz, right? That I'm a bust, I'm a this, I'm a that. Imagine how good a kid gotta be for you to kick that jazz and I still kept getting signed. Let me give you another fun fact. When I was with the Charlotte Bobcats, I was averaging a double-double in two quarters. I got hurt in the beginning of the season. Tyrus Thomas got eight and eight points because he, he was with the Chicago Bulls. He had eight points, eight rebounds. That got him $40 million with the Charlotte Bobcats. 
uh, that year, I think I finished with around the same numbers as Tyrus Thomas. Um, matter of fact, DeAndre Jordan averaged eight and eight uh, for the Clippers. And I guess his eight and eight was better because he was dunking it, but it was still eight and eight. Uh, and I think he got, what, 60, 70 million dollars? Uh, because my name is Kwame Brown, and because a nigga been on the radio talking about Bonafide Square, I'm Square. My same numbers that I got that parallel with these guys' number right. Imagine being my agent, having the same analytics and the same numbers as players. They're giving 70 and 80 million dollars. And because my name Kwame Brown, and because Stephen A. Smith and all of the media labeled me a bus. The fans run the show. The fans run these arenas. How many fans would have been happy at the time if they signed Kwame Brown for $80 million after Stephen A. Smith is yelling up and down the street saying I'm a bus and been to college campuses saying I'm a bus? So the money that I should have got from Golden State, it should have been seven, eight million dollars a year for four to five, maybe six years because that's what my play warranted. But because they were afraid of Stephen A. Smith and the media and what it was gonna look like, they gave me seven, seven million for one year in Golden State. Ain't that bad? You think I'm still crazy? I don't know what it is about the NBA and I don't know what it is about the media that attack us black athletes, especially ones like me that go around them white folks. They've been trying to call me crazy from the get-go. They took me to a Greek restaurant in LA at 18. From the hood. And I asked them, why the fuck are we at a Greek restaurant? And they go, oh, you I like it. See, that's, what the, that's when the brainwashing start. People try to tell you what you like and tell you what you want. But guess what I wouldn't let them do? Tell me what I like. And guess what I told them? I don't like this shit. So I got my 18 year old ass up and I walked out of the restaurant and I walked across the street and I got what I wanted to eat. Ask him about that story. And then I came back into the restaurant with French dressing and everybody thought that was the craziest shit in the world. I don't eat goat cheese and all this peanuts and all this shit you put on a salad. You son of a bitch, I'm 18 years old. What the fuck are you talking about? What was your son eating at 17, 18? McDonald's? So that's what the fuck I was eating. So I don't eat no goat cheese and stupid ass salads and all this shit at no Greek restaurant. So when I went, because I'm not going to let you control my mind. So they saw, they like, God damn, this boy don't do everything somebody tell him to do. So I went and got my French dressing. And I came in there and I told them how I want my salad. They thought I was crazy. I said, I don't want goat cheese, pecans, raisins. I said, do y'all got any regular motherfucking salads? 18 years old, talking to them like this. Do y'all got any regular damn salad? What the fuck I'm gonna do with this? They said, what's a regular salad? Go get me some lettuce. Make it like my mama. Put my mama's cooking on this shit. Since y'all want to be a five-star Greek ass restaurant, if you can't do what my mama do, I'm leaving this bitch now. So sprinkle some of my mama's cooking on this salad. I said, I want you to boil me a hard boiled egg and you cut it up and you put that motherfucker on there, okay? Listen to me good, nigga. <laughs> I want a hard boiled egg. I want some tomatoes. I want cucumbers. Put extra tomatoes on there because my mama used to put the tomatoes on there and I sprinkle a little salt on it. Uh, and give me some cucumbers and make sure you mix that shit in good and that's all I want. That's how we eat our salad, motherfucker. I ain't Greek. Always trying to make somebody into what y'all want them to be. And guess what, bitch? It didn't work then, and it won't work now. But Stephen A., bitch, now that I know you an implant, ho, you would put on me, boy. <laughs> you an implant-ass nigga. They put you on me, boy. But they couldn't put you on me good enough. You couldn't be the 18-year-old bitch and you had the mic. I bet you won't talk now, ho. <laughs> I bet you won't talk now. Because your life, we need to see your life at 18, and we need to see what you was doing before you met Kwame Brown. Bitch, you talking about me, but I'm the best thing that hit your life, you bitch. Since you met Kwame Brown and uttered those famous words, Bonafide Scrub, which you was projecting onto me, because, bitch, you the real Bonafide Scrub. 
And guess what? That scrub coming to get on that ass. <laughs> hey, look here. I'm going to start watching you, bitch. Every time you do a show, I'm a, now that I'm back home, I'm going to watch you, bitch. Because you a sorry son of a bitch. And nobody don't want to hear that shit about, oh, it's, it's uh, white privilege for Tim Tebow to get in the quarterback. Don't you even try that shit right now, bitch. You do whatever them white people tell you to do. Don't try to spin that shit right now to try to act like you with us. You torn down every black motherfucker you've been around. A.I. Carmelo, me, you just told a story about Matumbo. Man, Matumbo, he just said, you, whatever shit you were saying, you was a bitch ass nigga. You, hey, look here, boy. You don't need to hang around nobody else black, bitch. Stay your bitch ass over there in the country club or wherever the hell you live at. You already look like you need a toupee, so you'll fit right in, bitch. <laughs> you must sleep in a motherfucking coffin, nigga. Hey. If you don't sleep in a coffin at night, you need to, bitch. Cause you the devil. Trying to tear down every black kid that's better than you, bitch. When you interview for your job, they ask you one thing. Will you tear down the black community? And you say, hell yeah, 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 yeah. You did it just like this, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they gave you that pen, bitch. They say, prove it. And your ass went to work. Run me by, you bitch ass girl, he can't even. Look how you talk about me, bitch. So you mean to tell me, both things can't be true at the same time. So you mean to tell me, MJ and all them scouts watch me not be able to walk, run, jump, shoot, and all this shit, and still drafted me? <laughs> Don't call me Kwame, bitch. Call me Houdini then. <laughs> you, you motherfucker so stupid. You don't know what to say out your mouth. So I'm just Harry Houdini. I showed up at the draft. Uh, they put me against all these niggas. They put me against Tyson twice. So when Tyson got there, I, what does that say about Tyson and all these players that I kicked their draws in the ass? What does that say about these players? When I can't walk, I can't shoot, I can't shot. Cause boy, look here, every time I saw Tyson and Eddie, well, I was on their ass. Yeah. Even with MJ on the floor, I told him one day, now, hold on now, you're going to have to give me this goddamn ball. I can't let these niggas be out here and you don't give it to me now. I think I got thrown out the game in Chicago. I was so goddamn mad. <laughs> see, everything I say is true. Y'all just been listening to some bitch-ass nigga too long. And see, it's, it's, it, it is a... It is a... Now that I think about it, Stephen A., boy, that's crazy. I don't think I ever remember Stephen A. Smith before I got drafted. Where, where did Stephen A. Smith come from? Where, do anybody know where Stephen A. Smith come from? Did he have a job before I got drafted in, in journalism? Was he in Philly or something like that? Because, man, when that nigga met me, he took off. Huh? That man took off. Where can you purchase my merch? It's on my Instagram. I appreciate it, Michael Oden. Uh, but it's on my Instagram, uh, K-W-A-N underscore L-O-W. It's a link in the bio. And on YouTube, uh, it's on the About page. You go to the About side and uh, you, can, you can buy merch. Get you some of them mama's cooking. Also, I'm going to put up a link to my um, foundation so you guys can donate uh, the... Super chats and the things you guys have been giving me is greatly appreciated. And I'm going to go purchase some shoes for these young men with them big ass feet down there in Brunswick, Georgia. And I'll be doing a video showing you guys uh, when I pass out shoes. See, I ain't the type of nigga that run in the march in the street. I always been the type of nigga from day one. I get blessed. I power me up a little bit and I put, push some off to the side to help other people. See, from day one, go look at any interview, go look at anything I ever said. Y'all got bitch ass niggas trying to steal my mama's cooking, you son of a bitch, Stephen A. Woo, boy, you ain't shit. You gonna get exposed, boy. Because people are now, they can go back. I posted one of your videos up on my Facebook page. And what you said to those college students about me, man, what did I do to you, brother? <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, look here. Listen here, man. Your white daddy must gave you a hell of a script. I mean, it's 10 years in. I mean, y'all shouldn't be like that because you ain't even tell them kids that. Look here, over your lifetime, one year of this man's salary, you not gonna make. <laughs> you ain't tell them that. You told them all the negative. Cool, let's go with that. I'm a bust, I can't shoot, I can't do nothing, but you didn't tell them kids they're going to stay in a school for four years, accumulate debt that they got to pay somebody back, $70,000, $80,000. I walked into $12 million at 18 without owing nobody shit. Actually, I'm lying. My mama had my name on the light bill, and some of you bet not laugh because your name was on the light bill too. So my credit and shit was fucked up. Like this. But I don't want to talk about my mom. But anyway, my mama's cooking, nigga. <laughs> but y'all could have told them motherfuckers. Kwame lost his damn mind. I sure did. But anyway, y'all could have told them motherfuckers the other side of the coin. You could have told them that. That one year of this man's salary, after you said he's a bust, I mean, he didn't work on his game. I don't, I don't know how the fuck he made it 10 years. That's what you should have said because you didn't say that. Because you could have brought the analytics there, but you didn't because you's a bitch. But you gave one narrative and one side of the story, sir. Why didn't you tell them going to that college is going to force them in debt right away? And having that job that pay you $100,000 a year, which probably you won't get right out of college because you have no experience. So... This college dream that you was pushing, you little bald head bitch, that most kids come out of school and they make mm, 50, 60, unless you go for a specialty degree, you might get 70, 80, and you work your way up. But then, higher that you go, most of you go out, come out of school, $80,000 in debt. You'll never pay that off, never. So, for them not to tell you the other side of the coin, it leads me to believe that this was like a mission for them. Don't you young niggas be great? Don't you motherfuckers come out of that? Because I would have only went to college in order to get a job, correct? This shit easy. My mom was cooking. My mom, thank you, mom. Thank you for giving me your cooking. I appreciate you. And you little young niggas, y'all better listen to y'all mama's cooking. If you got a good mama and she's telling you the do's and don'ts, she telling you to stay away from that nigga he trouble, you better listen to your mama's cooking. I'm telling you, a lot of things that happen to you is because you niggas don't listen. Listen to your mama's cooking. She trying to help you. And if your father in there with you, nigga, listen to your daddy's cooking too. His shit, I got to figure out what I'm going to do for daddy's cooking. We can't sprinkle for daddy. We got to pound for daddy or something. Daddy got to be hard. But oh wait wait wait! I want to be all inclusive. Daddy can do this too, I guess. I'll, you know, all inclusive. We ain't judging. <laughs> what do you say? For some big ass feet, the NBA did uh, injustice. Keep you silent for the public. You won't find one interview where we just talking. Not one. Not one. This entire time, you've heard other people talk about me. And even when, there's one interview, I'm lying. There's one interview after I'm retired. I'm in L.A. They brought me in. It was like a 30 or 40 minute interview. But they let out three minutes of the interview. And I think the title that they put up there was uh, Kwame Brown tries to regain the narrative of his career. <laughs> you can't make it up. They didn't challenge none of it. They, they put three minutes of a 30 minute interview. And then the title said it all. It don't matter what they say about Kwame Brown, it got to start and end with negativity. I've worked with the Kidney Foundation in LA. I've done all kind of toy drives. I work with Mattel Toys. They ain't ran none of that story. I go to jail for anything. I go to jail for speeding, uh, anything. Boy, he the worst nigga in the world. Hey, where White Mamba at? Scalabrini, where you at, White Mamba? 
White Mamba. <laughs> oh boy, this shit was easy. Now all this could have been avoided. And I'm glad. They say things happen for a reason. All this would have been avoided. And all this cracking y'all getting wouldn't have happened if two little beta male bitches would have just apologized. Fake gangster ass niggas. All they had to do was apologize for disrespecting me. And they didn't. So let's thank them two beta male bitches. Shout out to you, Becky with the good hair. And shout out to you, over aggressive, too old ass, fake gangster ass nigga Jack. Shout out to you, 40 something year old nigga that's gangster. Beta. <laughs> This what a man look like. This what your son's supposed to sound like. Your son ain't supposed to be out here chasing these punk ass rappers. Not all, because I like some of these rappers. But the ones that's pushing destruction and death and shooting and killing and Draco, your sons are following these guys. Because the guys that are not doing all that, they calling them busts. They calling them losers. But see, the guys that they promote, is insecure little bitches that jump gates and scare their kids and fight another nigga because you couldn't handle your woman. See, the guys they put on is bitch ass niggas like motherfucking Jack, a fake ass thug that got ran over and beat up in Indiana because he thought he was tough and then hanging around with rags and joining all kind of punk ass groups like he tough. Talk to every man like he just the best, like he a bad bitch or something. And now he joined another group so he could think he tough. Those are the type of motherfuckers that get on a podcast. Jack's level of education is no higher than mine. He can't speak better than me. The bitch go to sleep during the goddamn broadcast that he getting paid for. But these two little dummy the, uh, degenerates that ain't really accomplished shit in life but a fucking Jack hanging his hat on, jumping in the stands and winning a fucking trophy. But bitch, you ain't got no land. And if you do, let's, let's see, let's match land. Bitch ass nigga. Fuck you talking about. You bought too many cars and pretty shoes to have land. I watched how many purses and money you were throwing out to them bitches. You gotta have this job, bitch nigga. You couldn't be like me. Bitch, you get fired, it's over for you, whole nigga. When the last time you seen me working? And you think you a hell of a nigga. You better pray I get up off your ass. Cause people stop watching your podcast, bitch. <laughs> you gonna be back to thugging. <laughs> Punk ass nigga running your goddamn mile to a Geechee. That ain't something you supposed to do, boy. Fuck you mean. But anyway, I need to eat this beautiful salad. I appreciate y'all for listening. I hope y'all go look up these interviews with Stephen A. And imagine it being your son. Ima and Kwame Brown a bus. I'm, I'm cool with being a bus. But look at the way he talked to Kevin Durant. It, 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 he has no bounds. So you talked about me because I'm a scrub. Cool, I'll go for that. I'm a bitch ass bus. Why you talk to Kevin Durant like that? Hmm? Why you ain't find out what happened with AI before you let all them white people uh, run them stories talking about practice, practice? Hmm? You, you ain't wanna help? Hmm. Where you come from, boy? All these white athletes that did not play well, they get to go off into the abyss and live healthy lives and stand up like men. But you want black players their whole life to be built around and respected of how they play a game. Because you want black boys to think and black people to think their only lane is sports. So if you're not good at sports, you ain't shit. Which is kind of ironic because bitch, you wasn't good at sports and you ain't shit. 
and you ain't good at life. All you do is talk about people. And what's going to happen when somebody take your microphone? What are your skills, bitch? What are your skills? Hmm? If they listen to their moms, if they listen to their mom, uh, uh, Khadijah Jenkins, appreciate it. If they listen to their mama's cooking, they would know not to talk about a man without a job. <laughs> they get what they deserve. Yeah, because I got time today. I got time every day. Not not, not all the time, because I don't want to give y'all an impression that I don't do work. I just don't work for anybody. When I get on my tractor and I move that dirt around and I cut some trees, and I work on any building, or I pay somebody to work on any building, it's my building. When I'm on the land and I'm moving the dirt, it's my land. It's my tractor. It's my dirt. <laughs> Jack, you don't got jack shit but a big-ass mouth, bitch. You and that pretty bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Where they at? They in here? There's a lot of people in here. Jesus Christ. Man, I salute y'all, man. I appreciate y'all coming looking at this little old bus. What y'all doing here? Stephen A. Boy, if Stephen A. catch y'all over here, he gonna rant on y'all ass too. <laughs> no, but see, I don't want to blame them too much for being mindless sheep. Uh, they just been around the people drinking the Kool-Aid because as a black person, you got family members around you that's telling you to stay focused on what your job is. There's always somebody in the black family that be like, yo, you tripping. Most of the niggas that get money, they just get away from those type of people. They don't want to hear nothing. They just go along with the get along.